All right, so the iPhone SE 2022 is one of the cheapest iPhones that you can get right now. But with phones like the iPhone 15 series existing, should you spend your money on the iPhone SE in the same age? Let's take a look. Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to TeamViewer Y. And yeah, so recently Apple released the new iPhone 15 series. They do come with some new features, especially on the base model, such as USB-C and the new dynamic island. But of course, as with most iPhones, they are somewhat expensive and folks looking for a budget-friendly iPhone might want to go for a cheaper model, in which case you have the iPhone SE 2022. Now, of course, this was launched last year, but is it still worth getting in this day and age? Now, if you want to check this device, I will drop some links in the description below, as well as links to our other iPhone videos here on the channel. With that said, let's get to the video. All right, so first and foremost, probably two of the biggest advantages in getting the iPhone SE in addition to the lower price as the A15 Bionic chip inside, as well as the assurance of future updates on the device. Compared to most cheap Android phones, if you buy them, there's not much assurance of Android updates. You probably get two updates at most, but even then, a lot of manufacturers don't really update their cheaper phones regularly. Also, you do sacrifice a bit in the performance department, but that is not necessarily the case with the iPhone SE. Apple has included the A15 Bionic chip inside, which is probably one of the most impressive mobile processors that I've used on a smartphone. And yeah, for a ton of games and apps, it's going to have no problem running them, although you do get the smaller display, which we'll talk about later. And yeah, as an entry point to iOS, the iPhone SE 2023 can get you the latest iOS features and access to updated apps. So yeah, those are two major points that you probably want to take into consideration in getting the iPhone SE. Now the SE does come with two cameras, which includes the selfie camera and the main camera on the rear panel. And yeah, there's a bit of limitation to this, being that there's no ultrawide or telephoto lens, but I've noticed that the camera manages to get decent shots. I mean, it's not exactly a terrible camera. You do get some of the current iOS camera software features on the device. And yeah, for folks looking for a casual point and shoot camera phone, the SE is pretty capable. Although I do have to say that there's no night mode on the camera on the SE. Even with the A15 on board, Apple has decided not to include night mode, which is a really strange mission. So that's one limitation of the camera that you have to take into consideration. But other than that, it's a pretty capable shooter. It can even record videos in 4K. And if you're not looking for any powerful camera performance or one inch sensors, then this should suffice. Right up next is the build quality. It's not really a major point of concern, but I have to shout out the build quality on the iPhone SE, even in its day and age where people might consider this a really old design, but it's a solid smartphone. It's gonna feel sturdy thanks to the aluminum and the strengthened glass on the phone itself. And yeah, it's a pretty solid phone. And for fans of the classic iPhone design, there's not much wrong that you can get with the iPhone SE. There's also Touch ID. Now, this will be a very personal preference in terms of what you need from your smartphone. I mean, some people appreciate the faster performance of Face ID, but with Touch ID, sometimes it just feels more convenient to use. For people after a more classic iPhone feel, Touch ID is just gonna fit right into your playbook. Now, given the phone's design, Apple has clearly positioned the iPhone SE for buyers looking for the classic iPhone feel as you're not gonna get groundbreaking battery life on the iPhone SE. It's gonna be enough for most apps and tasks. You can probably get a day's worth of use from morning till night. And I wouldn't say that it's really ideal for gaming, even with the A15 Bionic. It's gonna be capable, but in terms of longevity, the battery endurance on the iPhone SE might not be the best for gaming. So for more moderate and casual users, the battery life on the iPhone SE should be so and so. Probably one big downside that I see with the SE is the outdated display. It's not OLED, it's got a lower resolution, and if you're coming from a phone with a larger screen, there's going to be a bit of an adjustment for you, especially if you play a lot of games on your larger screen device. But yeah, all in all, the iPhone SE is a bit more affordable compared to the other iPhones in Apple's current lineup. But with that said, you have to consider that its target audience is probably people who are looking for a very familiar feel, people who are moving from an older iPhone such as the original iPhone SE model, or maybe people looking for a more minimalist approach 
to their smartphone usage, in which case the SE should give you a balance of being connected to the world and having access to updated apps, but not so much as it prompts you to use your smartphone all the time. So yeah, these are some quick thoughts to consider. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to check out our other videos. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.